Welcome back, my lovelies. Those of you guys that are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Pinky. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. Let's get into the readings. This is going to be the monthly love reading for all zodiac signs. We're going to begin with Pisces all the way to Aries. We're doing it a little bit backwards. So for those of you guys that are, like I said, returning, welcome back. Those of you guys that are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get into your reading. For those of you guys that are interested in personal readings, you can find our online store uh, on the description box below. Click on it. You'll be able to see all the services we provide. We are now open calendar for appointments as well as consultations, healings, and spell work. So let's get into it. Let's see what spirit has for all of you guys. Okay. Hope you guys are doing amazing. Let's get into it. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see clearly and concisely the messages for all zodiac signs. We're going to begin here with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We're going to look into their new love as well as old love or old flame. Let's see what's going on with them, spirit guides. Please give us insight. Allow us to see clearly and concisely. Okay, we're beginning here with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Let's look into their new love. How are they seeing Pisces at this point in time? How are they seeing Pisces at this point in time? We have the Ace of Wands. So for some of you guys, obviously, this is new love. There is definitely very, very strong physical attraction. Uh, there is definitely a lot of passion, a lot of intensity here. How do they feel about Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? How do they feel about them at this point in time? We have the Queen of Pentacles. So they're definitely seeing you as the type of person that could actually make it the long run this is something um it is brand new it is just beginning for those of you guys that have been dealing with this person for over a month things are progressively going to get a bit more steady more stable uh, they are definitely seeing you as the prize what are their future actions towards pisces sun moon rising venus what is their actions towards pisces sun moon rising venus okay here we go Ace of Swords. So there is some type of confession, some type of opening up of communication. I feel that for a lot of you guys, this could have been something that you thought was progressively, uh, maybe something that started very intense. Like I said, a lot of physical attraction here. But there is something about this person that perhaps you perceived it or thought it to be uh, maybe something fleeting, something exciting. And usually excitement can burn out very quickly. However, there are confessing or professing some type of feeling for you. This could also indicate, you know, taking it to the next level or having that open conversation about, you know, do we make it official? Should we officially start dating? So it seems to me like they are coming towards you uh, with the desire or the want to get you off the market, Pisces. Very, very exciting news. All right. I'm going to put these cards back. Now we're going to look into your old love or old flame. How do they feel? Old love. How do they feel about Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? How do they feel about Pisces? All right. We have the five of pentacles indicating the feeling like you left them behind. There is almost like they constantly had the need or they constantly had to crave or not crave sorry they constantly had to fight for your attention at least that's how you make them feel there was almost a feeling of like pushing them little by little so there could have been a situation or something that um something that played a role in the distancing in the pulling away of this connection uh, for some of you guys it could have been financial difficulties it could have been that uh, you were prioritizing or perhaps had a lot of responsibilities and they just felt like they were completely alone or they felt like they just couldn't understand you. You weren't really letting them in Pisces. Now, why do they feel this way? Why do they feel this way? The five of pentacles, ace of wands, because this was a very perhaps passionate connection. This was intense. Perhaps for some of you guys, it progressively stopped being physical um, so it could have been a situation where um, as good as the relationship was, the physical connection was. And the moment that uh, the connection between you guys started to decline, um, you kind of pulled away or created some type of distance and your intention or energy wasn't present. Um, for some of you guys, it could have been that there was a 
Uh, for some of you guys, it could have been that there was some type of distraction, perhaps pursuing your goals or aspirations. Now, I am hearing for some of you guys, it could have been a situation where they were very complacent. And this is something that really stuck a chord or perhaps um, created the dissatisfaction on your part, Pisces, because you felt like they weren't really matching your energy, like they weren't really um, proactive or perhaps you, whether you were female or masculine, uh, you felt like you were the masculine energy in this connection. Uh, I see you much more focused, much more determined, um, and they were a bit more complacent. So uh, that could have been the strain in the relationship. What is their future actions towards Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? What is their future actions towards Pisces? King of Wands. So I do feel them very stuck or stubborn. Um, you may get some type of communication, but I feel that it's fleeting communication. So it could be a random text, a random message or DM, but not much consistency behind that, not much effort. It's kind of like the high type of thing or how you been type of energy. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, Pisces, if you guys are hoping or wanting to hear from an ex-partner or a partner from the past that you're no longer in communication. I feel that this is not something that could you could gloss over. Even if there was a desire to want to rekindle the connection, I feel like there is a lot of inconsistency in the energy of them towards the energy of you in comparison. So there is a lot of differences for some of you guys. It could be that you have goals, you have aspirations. And they can't really understand that drive behind that you carry um, because they are much more complacent or much more uh, easygoing, not really trying to take over the world, so to speak. And I see you very passionate, very creative right now. So I feel you guys are just in different in different pages right now, different sinks, different path links. Um, so that could be potentially something that would still even like I said, if there was some type of communication or even talk of reconciliation, I feel like it wouldn't go very far. All right, my lovelies. Okay, now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. We're going to look into their new love. How do they see Aquarius at this point in time? How do they see them? We have the Justice card. Okay, so they see you a little bit um, unemotional. They see it a bit difficult to read you. For some of you guys, it could be that uh, they're seeing this as a drive for them to continue wanting to pursue you. Um, but you do have to, I would suggest opening up a little bit more if you are interested, only because the justice is very non-emotional card. This speaks about the need for balance. So for some of you guys, it could be that you're very much in your head. Even if you are feeling this person or interested in this person, I don't really see you guys like trying to open up. And though this may be, you know, what makes you a bit mysterious, um, with the justice, once balance is restored, they may quickly lose interest if you're not really putting effort or energy, Aquarius. All right, how do they feel about Aquarius at this point in time, their new love or um, person of their interest? How do they feel about Aquarius? All right, we have the Empress, so they definitely see you as uh, beautiful. There is a lot of uh, physical attraction here. They see you um, as a person that is very loving, um, very nurturing, which is very the opposite of the Justice card. So for some of you guys, I'm getting it could be a person that either knows about you or perhaps friends know you, um, the real you. And they see you as a very loving person, which is very contrast to the justice card. Justice is always methodical. It is always non-emotional card. So there could be a conundrum that they're currently experiencing. Again, conundrum does make an enigma, right? It makes it mysterious. It makes it exciting. That could be the reason why they are really trying to get to know you. Like I said, there is a need for you to be a little bit more open to love, Aquarius. Okay, what is the future actions towards Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, their new love, or person of interest? What is their future actions towards Aquarius? All right, and we have the Two of Cups. So I definitely love this energy, you guys. This is speaking to me about the 
difficulty that it is when getting to know someone or when we're talking about dating and opening up and, you know, allowing them to go over our walls and everything, all the baggage that we carry from previous relationships. I see initially very methodical type of energy. They see you as a bit cold or distant, which makes it more difficult for them to understand if you are in fact interested or not. However, they see you as the everything they ever wanted and their future actions is having that openness, that open communication, uh, even vulnerability in that the way they express themselves. Uh, it's giving me almost the energy of when you go on a date or you go get some coffee or something with the person and you don't really think it's going to be like it ends up being a very deep conversation about perhaps past experiences and what they want or what they're looking for in the future. So I definitely do see a progression in openness, a progression in building or working towards building this connection. Uh, beautiful energy here, Aquarius. All right, now we're going to look into your past love or old flame. How do they feel about Aquarius at this point in time? How do they feel about Aquarius at this point in time? Ace of Cups. So there is definitely still love there. There is definitely still that emotional connection um, to you. Why do they feel this way about Aquarius? Oh, okay. So we have two cards here. So, okay, I'm going to take both these cards. Um, so the way they feel is definitely they still have feelings and emotions for you. They don't want to reveal this to you. They don't want to open up or tell you that they still have love for you. For some of you guys, you may still be dealing with this person from the past. Um, and it's almost like on a friendly type of basis. It's not nothing substantial. But I feel that the reason why, and maybe for some of you guys, you wondered or asked yourself, um, why do they still randomly text me or why do they still randomly message me? And though they may try to come across as friends and, you know, in reality, they're still invested in this connection. They just don't want to reveal that to you. They're trying to protect themselves or they're trying to protect their ego from getting hurt. So when I say ego, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes, you know, um, especially if they know that they were the one that dropped the ball and they've realized or there's some type of realization, it's really difficult to have to be the one to be the bigger person and accept that and to, you know, apologize for whatever went wrong in the relationship. And I feel like they're trying to test the waters to see if you would give them any type of feedback that would give them the incline to understand that you still, in fact, have feelings for them. That's basically what they're waiting for, because I see them trying to you know, trying to fish on uh, the way your responses are or the way um, you would communicate with them that would let them to believe if you do still have feelings for them. Do not be surprised if uh, there hasn't been communication and then communication opens up and they're like, it seems like they're fishing for information. They really are. So it's not in your head. It, they are actually trying to see what's going on in your life, to see if you're dating anyone, that type of energy. What is their future actions towards Aquarius? What is their future actions towards Aquarius? Future actions. The Knight of Pentacles. So I don't see them really um, professing. I don't see them, you know, swallowing their pride. Um, I don't see them taking any type of self-responsibility. I feel that they want to take the easy route and the easy route would be to communicate with you or to talk to you and to ask you questions about your personal life to see if in fact there is an opportunity there because they don't want to, you know, uh, openly tell you that they are still holding on to the hope of wanting to fix this connection. And that is, again, ego. And I feel that ego is what keeps them a bit, you know, frozen um, not really wanting to take any type of movement, they will be progressively, um, like I said, if there is recent communication that opened up, they may, you know, progressively like try to fish for information about you or try to look into what's going on with you. But I feel that the reason why they're doing that is because they don't want, they fear being rejected basically is what I'm hearing. Okay. 
All right, my lovelies, now let's go to Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn. We're going to look into their new love. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. How do they see Capricorn at this point in time? How do they see Capricorn at this point in time? We have the King of Pentacles very much in your element, Capricorn. They see you as a very self-sufficient person, a bit... Um, a bit challenging is what I'm sensing. More than challenging, I fear that it. I feel like it has more to do with. Uh, they're a little bit intimidated by you, uh, Capricorn. They see you very self-sufficient, uh, very self-independent. Uh, they see you as a person that is very. You have a very strong character. Um, they definitely do see you as someone worthy. They see you as someone worthwhile and worth fighting for, or worth getting to know. However. They do feel a little bit confused, like if you're interested in them or you're just interested in them as friends. I feel that there is this awkwardness to this energy right now. Um, so for some of you guys, it could be a brand new person that you're dealing with and it just seems a bit awkward. Like as an example, I'm getting the energy of like everything flows organically and very harmoniously when you're texting or when you're on the phone. But then when you guys are in person, it's a little bit awkward. And I feel that the reason for that is because both of you guys are very much in your head. How do they feel about Capricorn? How do they feel about Capricorn at this point in time? How do they feel about Capricorn? All right. We have the Queen of Cups. So they are definitely uh, starting to grow emotions for you, Capricorn. Um, very opposites here. Uh, they see you as the person that may be very intimidated. However, their emotions are progressively growing for you. And I feel that the, the stronger they get, the more clear they're going to be about what they're wanting with you. Um, and where is it that they want this connection to move forward? I see this person, like I said, a bit of awkwardness. And the reason for it is because you're dealing with the person that perhaps has experienced uh, a lot of difficulties when it's come to relationships. They're very clear on what it is that they're looking for. And I feel that you make it just a little bit difficult for them to read or to feel like you're interested. So it, it, it's giving me the energy of, like I said, I don't know why I'm feeling some type of awkwardness. Um, could be that this person is extremely quirky as well. So uh, that could be the awkwardness. I know that even though Capricorns don't like to accept that, yeah, can be very judgy. <laughs> All right. What is their future actions towards Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? What are their future actions towards Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Eight of Wands. So I definitely do see, and I seen the Ace of Wands here at the bottom. So yeah, they're definitely very, very uh, interested in you. They are emotionally invested and their future actions towards you is basically they're going to straight up tell you that they're interested in you and they want to know if you're interested in them. Now, for those of you Capricorns that recently have been dealing with this person and you feel like you're not sure if they're vibing with you, um, I feel that both of you guys are very much in your head and it may catch you off guard when they openly tell you, hey, Capricorn, you know, I'm going to be honest with you and you've been really very much in my mind and I'm very interested in you and I would like to get to know each other better, perhaps uh, progress the relationship or connection, um, maybe even ask you officially to uh, start dating, um, officially dating. And the reason I'm saying that is because Queen of Cups is like they've already made up their mind. They are emotionally invested in this connection. Eight of Wands is very quick and speedy movement. So definitely positive here. All right. Now let's look into your old love. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Old love or old flame. How do they feel about Capricorns at this point in time? How do they feel about Capricorns at this point in time? We have the high priestess. So they are keeping their feelings for you hidden. They're not being completely honest or transparent. For some of you guys, if there's no communication, they may be watching you. Um, high priestess is always indicating in a very sneaky way. So it could be them making or creating fake accounts, um, maybe even following you under a fake account. Or if you're getting random calls uh, at odd hours of the night, um, possibilities that it's them is very heightened here okay let's see why do they feel this way about capricorn 
Why do they feel this way about Capricorn? Why are they hiding their feelings? Because they're very unsure. So I'm getting two cards here that the moon stands out. I feel like for a lot of you guys, um, the person from your past or this old flame, uh, there could have been some type of separation or some type of breakup because there is a lot of confusion going on. It was almost like you guys weren't able to get on the same page. It seemed like you guys were very off, um, not much in sync. And for some of you guys, it could have been that the person wasn't completely honest. Uh, they could have been dealing with their emotions, perhaps having feelings for someone else, or perhaps debating if they were even capable of giving you some type of commitment or some type of uh, stability in this relationship. I really see that they are definitely still in that confused stage. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, Capricorn. It's giving me the energy of a person that was very selfish and then they came to the realization that they were selfish. Now they're trying to figure out the way to address the situation, to want to rekindle this connection. But again, I feel like they're going about it the wrong way. Instead of eavesdropping, as an example, why not just be the bigger person, reach out and be like, hey, I fucked up. But I feel like they're not doing that. They're going around the bush. Um, but ultimately, that's their desire. Let's see what is their future actions towards Capricorn. What is this old love future actions towards Capricorn? Future actions. Yeah, there's no movement. Um, again, what stands out a lot to me here is the moon. In all three cards, we have the moon. And the moon is always emotions, yes, but it also indicates duality. It indicates not being able to see clearly or concisely what's really going on or what's really happening behind the scenes. Um, I see them being sneaky. I see them, uh, like I said, pretending or faking or creating fake accounts to look at you to see what's going on with you instead of being the bigger person and taking some type of responsibility. Um, they're refusing to do that. They rather see you from a distance. Again, the possibility of them not even... Try, they're trying to figure out if they have feelings for you. They're trying to figure out if those feelings are as strong as their de desire for freedom. So I feel like they are very confused. Uh, this is very immature type of energy. If you want me to be completely honest, my advice is keep it pushing Capricorn. All right, now let's go to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to new love, how do they see Sagittarius? How do they see Sagittarius? Justice card. Okay, so they definitely see you as a bit, a bit judgy. A bit judgy is what I'm hearing here with the Justice card. Um, could be that you're extremely vocal, Sagittarius. You're extremely, like, you don't have any holds barred when it comes to communicating, when it comes to expressing um, and for some reason they're feeling like, they're feeling like they have to, it's almost giving me the energy, like the fear to express or to fully open up because they feel like you're going to judge them or you're going to critique them. Um, for some of you guys, it could be that you're dealing with someone that is still hung up on someone else. Okay. Okay. How do they feel at this point in time, the chariot? So there was a recent decision for some of you guys. It could have been that uh, the person seemed very detached initially. And all of a sudden you see them being more like texting you more often, calling you more often, like actively, very proactively pursuing you. So there was a switch. Something happened here. What I got initially was that this person that you're dealing with could have been hung up on someone from the past. However, they came to the realization that it was more to do with the absence of that person than what they truly felt. So it's kind of like nostalgia and realizing that it was nostalgia and bringing balance or making the decision, making the rational decision. It's time to move on. And I see them like really picking up the ball and just running with it. And this is almost like uh, insight in regards to how their thought process was, right? They were trying to figure out exactly where they were. They came to the understanding that it's better for them to move on, that they're ready to move on. 
and they decided to more proactively pursue you. So there was a switch. If you recently experienced, um, like I said, they're more often texting you, they're, uh, you know, wanting to take you out, wanting to hang out. This is no accident or no coincidence. The reason for it is because they came to the realization that they need to move on, um, that that's the healthier uh, way to approach the situation. And I definitely do see them very focused in wanting to attain you or in wanting to uh, see how far this connection can go. What is their future actions? What is their future actions towards Sagittarius? Future actions towards Sagittarius. The High Priestess. Okay. So, as you guys can see here, Sagittarius, things that are happening right now in regards to new love for you guys. It is something that is out of your control at this point in time. We have three cards and those three cards are all major arcanas. So the justice card symbolizes making the decision, bringing balance into your life. Um, for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are single, you could have recently came to the conclusion that you're no longer going to date emotionally, that you're going to date and pick the people that seem the most or that have the most attributes uh, that you're looking for when it comes to relationships. So you want to approach you want to approach um, relationships uh, very methodical without connecting the emotional. I feel like for some of you guys, um, there's almost this feeling like you have a constant, you know, need to give the opportunity or to attract like people that perhaps are a bit toxic. So I see you wanting to approach this in a new way, uh, in a much more mature way, not really listening much to your emotions, but trying to listen to your mind, trying to make the right decisions, you know, choosing the partners that have the most compatibility with you, the ones that are stable, the ones that are not carrying any type of baggage, that type of thing. And I think that this is the best thing you could have done. So if you're one of those Sagittarius out there, that recently came to that aha moment or to that realization, you're on the right path. The chariot speaks about momen momentum, moving forward, taking action, taking the power back, realizing that you're not a victim or that you're not going to be a victim anymore, that you're going to proactively date with purpose. And I see you very focused. High Priestess is that of listening to your intuition. There is a difference between listening to your emotions and listening to your intuition. Have you ever dealt with a person that you loved dearly, but you knew something inside of you told you this is not the right way to go or this is not the right person? That's intuition. And that's what spirit is telling you here. The opportunities and the doors will open up for you in regards to love. Um, you're going about it the right way. It is about not being emotional, but making decisions from a very uh, non-emotional state, right? Listening to your mind. And that's what's going to change the outcome for you. That's what's going to change the type of people that you start dating, or I should say the quality of people that you start dating. So this is definitely a good thing, Sagittarius. All right, now let's go to Sagittarius's old love or old flame. How do they feel about Sagittarius at this point in time? How do they feel about Sagittarius at this point in time? Knight of Swords. They are very much in their ego. They are <clears throat> maybe some type of aggression. Maybe you guys ended not unnecessarily good terms. Why do they feel this way about Sagittarius? Why do they feel this way about Sagittarius? Okay, I see. So what they're showing me here is with the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Cups, they feel they feel very like they when they express or communicate with you, it could be in a very aggressive way. And the reason for this is like very nonchalant, very like, you know, how you been and you're like oh i've been fine how have you been it's all right like they're not really they're trying to communicate but they're not necessarily telling you much and the reason for it is because they're carrying anger 
about how the relationship ended. And the reason for this is because they still have feelings. So it's giving me very, very immature energy. It is two nights. So it's indicating to me that this person is very, um, a person that is very stubborn, but stupid stubborn. Like they get hung up on very non-important things. And if it's not their way, uh, they throw a tantrum type of energy. What is their future actions towards Sagittarius? What is their future actions towards Sagittarius? Future actions. Ten of Cups. Okay. So here's the energy that I'm sensing for uh, for you Sagittarians out there that are wanting to hear from that person from your past, that old flame or that ex-partner. This is a person that is very immature. It is a person that needs a lot of growth. Um, like I said, they're very stubborn. Uh, they're not the type of person that will sit there and listen, hear you out in order to try to understand. This is a person that is listening to you just so that they can have something to attack or a way to communicate, but it's not so much communicate. It's more like, um, they just want to answer. They want to be the last person that has the last word. Um, and they definitely are still in their feelings about you. That's the, that's the reason why they may seem very, uh, distant or very cold with the way they express or communicate. If you haven't heard from them, you will be hearing from them. And what they're showing me here is that there could be a possibility of rekindling this connection. And though the excitement of wanting to rekindle or wanting to revisit that situation or that relationship may be exciting because maybe it's something you've been hoping for. What they're telling you here is pay a lot of attention to how they're trying to move forward. So when I say how, it's almost like the ex that wants to come back into your life, but they don't want to make it official because they are hung up on what if it doesn't work out again. But in reality, they just haven't moved on and they're scared that you're going to move on. And that's the reason why they are wanting you to entertain them. I hope that makes sense. So what they're telling you here is, yes, there is a possibility of rekindling or revisiting this connection, but their energy is very immature. So be very straightforward with what it is that you want should you decide to give them the opportunity. As an example, if you're wanting to um, go back to being boyfriend and girlfriend or girlfriend and girlfriend, whatever your situation is, be very vocal, vocal about that because if you're not, um, they, will, they will progressively be wasting your time. Um, and once you bring that conversation up, it's like, I don't know if we want to... It's just going to be a weird and awkward situation. So it's better off if you're straightforward and honest, okay? All right. <clears throat> All right, now let's go to Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love. How do they see Scorpio at this point in time? How do they see Scorpio? They see you as someone worthwhile. They are definitely... Um, Definitely feeling like you are the type of person that they want to get to know, that they want to uh, be in a relationship with. They definitely see you as a person uh, that could potentially be girlfriend, boyfriend material. How do they feel about Scorpio at this point in time? How do they feel about Scorpio? How do they feel about Scorpio? Knight of Wands. Okay. So I feel like for some of you guys, this could be very new connection. For others of you guys, it could be within two to three months uh, getting to know this person. It is still exciting. It is still, there's still newness to this connection. Uh, they are definitely very uh, physically attracted to you and definitely trying to attain you if you catch my drift. What is their future actions towards Scorpio? Future actions towards Scorpio. What is their future actions towards Scorpio? Two of Cups. So I do see the promise for something much more stable. I do see the potential for something more stable. However, I do want to let you know, Scorpio, if you haven't been physically with this person, I would suggest putting it off or holding off for a while. Why? Because I feel that this person with the Knight of Wands does indicate that this is a person that likes the chase. But the moment they attain it, they kind of just get 
uninspired. Um, so my advice is not necessarily to play mind games, but make them or you are worthwhile. So make them wait. Okay. All right. Now let's go to your old flame or old love. How do they feel about Scorpio? How do they feel about Scorpio? How does Scorpio old love or old flame still feel about them at this point in time? Six of Swords. Okay, this is indicating to me that your person or your ex-partner uh, or past person um, has moved on. I see them, for some of you guys, it could have been a person that you already know is either in a relationship or some type of connection here. Why do they feel this way about Scorpio? Why do they feel this way about Scorpio? The Emperor. Okay, stubbornness. Okay, so they came to the they came to the conclusion um, they came to the conclusion that you guys were better off separated, giving each other some space or some room. I feel like ego could have been both your egos could have been bigger than this relationship. Um, for others of you, you could have been dealing with someone that was extremely stubborn. Um, the moment they realized that things were not going to go the way they wanted, or that you weren't going to mold yourself into what they wanted. Um, this is the moment that they realized that they're both of you guys are better off uh, without each other. And the reason is because the emperor always indicates um, consistency and stability, but through authoritative type of uh, energy. And with the six of swords indicating you or they realized that they were just not going to be able to change you or that you weren't able um, to change them. And the lovers is making the decision or being at crossroads and having to make the decision. So I feel like they were still emotionally connected to you. But I feel like for because you guys cared for each other, I feel like they came to the realization that it was better going your separate ways. My advice is keep it pushing, Scorpio. All right, now let's go to Libra. Libra, let's look into new love. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they see Libra at this point in time? How do they see Libra at this point in time? The world card, they definitely see you as um, something they always hoped for or something that they always wanted to have in a partner. Uh, there is a lot of what I'm getting is almost like compassion is something that they are very attracted to you. Um, your compassion is something that is very attracted to them, I should say. And they are definitely hoping that this will progress into something much more stable or much more long term. How do they feel about Libra at this point in time? How do they feel about Libra at this point in time? Ace of Swords. So they are honest. They've been honest with you. For some of you Libras, you could have started uh, dating this person uh, recently. And for some of you guys, it could have been that you got out of a relationship or that you are still in a relationship, relationship that's not working out. And this connection happened it's almost like i see you guys having to cut some type of link or some type of connection to the past in order to embrace this new beginning so for a lot of you guys it could be that you were in a very complicated situation when this person came along but i feel that as time progresses they are much more honest or more open about what it is that they want and there is a conversation to have where they're going to be professing or telling you exactly what it is that they want moving forward. I see you guys hesitating about letting go of something of the past. What is their future actions towards Libra? What is their future actions towards Libra? Future actions. Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, so I definitely do see an elevation here. Uh, some type of promise or some type of making it more official um, or taking it to the next level. But being able to embrace that is going to take for you to realize, Libra, that it's time to move on or that it's time to let go completely of the past. Stop reliving or living in the past. 
All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to your old love or old flame. How do they feel about Libra? Old love or old flame? How do they feel about Libra? Oh, okay. Nine of wands. Oof, okay. You really hurt them, Libra. <clears throat> Why do they feel this way? Why do they feel this way about Libra? Holy moly. All right, so what I'm sensing here off the bat was what I heard was I am, I am hurt and I am broken. Um, this could be vice versa. It is a general reading. But what I'm seeing here is there was a need to completely surrender, to completely give up on this relationship. Why? Because there was something that recently could have happened or ha could have came to light that there was a need to completely there was a need to break from this relationship um it's almost giving me like the point of no return and it was catastrophic for them to have either lost you or to have lost you the way they did um and again it, it could be vice versa it could have been that they were the ones that left you and the circumstances behind it was very difficult, um, but there was a need. It's almost like that needed to happen in order for you or for them to realize that this relationship had came to an end. Um, so it could have been you or it could have been them that were not really willing to walk away from this connection or this relationship. So it was almost as if the universe had to step up and reveal certain things to you that perhaps were hidden or that had to reveal certain things to them that were hidden in order to completely break from this connection. What is their future actions towards Libra? What is their future actions towards Libra? Future actions towards Libra. Yeah, so... I don't see communication happening, Libra. However, for some of you guys, it could have been that the separation or the breakup was caused because of a third party, because you found out that they were cheating or being with someone else or that they had feelings for someone from the past uh, that was that those feelings were still very present in this relationship. Um, there was a need for this break. There was a need for this separation. I feel like the more you guys would have held on to this connection, the more toxic it would have become. I think that at this point in time, it's best you walk away from this Libra and give yourself the opportunity to start something new. Um, I know endings can be very difficult, but I feel like at this point in time, there is no returning. There is no being able to heal from this um, only because if there was a desire to want to rekindle um, a lot of resentments would be present and it would inevitably come to a ending or a conclusion of this relationship again. So why continue hurting or why allow, why give someone the knife to continuously keep hurting or cutting you? All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love. How do they see Virgo? How do they see Virgo? Ten of Swords. Oof, what the heck happened here? How do they feel about Virgo? How do they feel about Virgo? Okay, interesting here. Okay, future actions towards Virgo. Future actions towards Virgo. Oof, okay. All right, so... Virgo, if you recently connected with someone and it felt like you guys were very connected, very in sync, everything was exciting, you guys were truly vibing or feeling each other, I feel that this person wasn't completely honest with you. I feel like there could have been a recent breakup or separation where between them and someone else where this is a type of uh, situation where 
they keep breaking up and going back with each other and breaking up and going back with each other. And it's so often that it happens that when they when they break up, they immediately go online, they immediately go on Tinder, they immediately, you know, try to do whatever they possibly can to keep themselves distracted. Because once the ex or the toxic person, and I say both of them are toxic, I'm going to be honest with you. But once the toxic person from the relationship uh, decides, you know, I've had enough and let's go back with each other, there is a going back. And there was a connection here where, like I said, you felt everything was going great and out of nowhere, things started changing. Uh, they stopped texting you or perhaps for some of you guys, they ghosted you. And the reason for it is because, like I said, they haven't moved on. They're still hung up on someone from the past or they're still entertaining that person from the past. And it's giving me huge vibes of like a very toxic relationship where, like I said, they break up because they get bored with each other. They go and do their fuckery and then they come back again. And it's like a never ending cycle. What they're saying here is keep yourself. I mean, if you're going through this and you've experienced this and you have you were already emotionally into this person, I'm sorry. But the best advice I can give you is keep it pushing. This is a person that is not emotionally available whatsoever. This is a person that needs to heal from their past relationship, but they still keep going to that past relationship. So there's no growth here. Um, what they're telling you is, keep yourself from that heartache if like I said if you are going through this and you were already emotionally invested I'm sorry the best thing I can tell you is don't waste your fucking time with this person honestly sorry you guys I had to take a quick sip of my water it's been a very long day and my voice is <clears throat> going it's Pretty much five in the morning right now. Okay. Now let's go to Libra's old love. Wait, not Libra. Virgo. Sorry. Virgo. Virgo. Okay. Here we go. Old love. How do they feel about Virgo at this point in time? Old love or past lover? How do they feel about Virgo at this point in time? Queen of Swords. Okay. Why do they feel this way? Why do they feel this way? Oh. Okay. I'm going to put them back in here. Why do they feel this way about Virgo? Why do they feel this way about Virgo? Future actions. Future actions towards Virgo. Future actions towards Virgo. Queen of Cups. Okay. So. Okay. So what they're saying here is in regards to how they feel about you. Um, I feel like they're doing everything they possibly can to prove to you that they've either moved on or that they're doing better than you are. It's almost like a competition type of thing. Queen of Swords always indicates being very non-emotional. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're not emotional, because as you can see, their future actions here is the Queen of Cups, which would indicate to me uh, being more emotionally available or growing out of their stubbornness and wanting to prove a point to giving in. So again, it, it's giving me very energy of like, I'm going to put it on social media I'm going to upload pictures. I'm going to show that I'm traveling type of thing or living my best life. Um, but it's because they're trying to prove a point. And their point is that whether you're in their life or not is irrelevant to them. But we all know that that's clearly not true with the Queen of Cups here. Now, in regards to why they feel this way, the Two of Swords indicates being stubborn. Something happened in this connection, Virgo, where I feel like you guys both gave up trying you guys kind of got fed up with each other or got tired of like waiting for that person to open up or them waiting for you to open up. I feel like pride got in the way. Um, and in that getting in the way, it kind of made you both kind of give up or surrender because you kind of grew tired of each other. Um, 
And it's giving me very much like needy energy here uh, with the Queen of Cups. So it's like they're trying to pretend that you didn't matter or that things that their separation or breakup didn't matter. But in reality, it did. And it could have been a person that was extremely clingy, perhaps a person that was extremely um, needy. And something happened where that connection kind of became very stale or very cold. They got tired of basically kissing your ass, Virgo. And the reason I say that is their future actions is the Queen of Cups. This is becoming emotionally available or giving into their emotions. This could also indicate hearing from them um, on a random night when they're drunk or when they've had a couple of uh, a few drinks. Um, and that's why they reach out because they can't contain their desire to reach out to you. Um Honestly, this type of energy is giving me like a very fuckery type of energy, not healthy whatsoever. So my advice is if you do get a random call or you do get a text and they're drunk and you know it, don't tempt your luck because what's going to happen is you're going to give in momentarily and it's going to be exciting, but then you're going to go back to the same fuckery, which is both of you guys being stubborn and just not being able to communicate with each other. And then you end up being in the same place that you started. So my advice is don't waste your time, Virgo. All right. Now let's go to Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo, new love. How do they see Leo? How do they see them? Judgment. Okay. How do they feel about Leo at this point in time? How do they feel about Leo? Wow. Okay, future actions towards Leo. Future actions towards Leo. Beautiful energy here. So, I feel like this person debated for a while um, to pursue you. So, it could have been that they felt like they were out of, like you were out of their league, or perhaps like you wouldn't give them the time of day. But the moment they decided to shoot their shot, uh, they realize that you are everything they've ever hoped for or they wanted or that they were looking for in a partner. I feel like as time progresses, it's going to feel very, what I'm getting for you guys is synchronicities. So pay attention to that, Leo. If you just recently started dealing with this person and all of a sudden you're seeing a lot of angel numbers or you see a specific color that stands out a lot and then they tell you, um, or they text you, or the moment you think of them, they text you. Know and understand that that is spirits uh, signs giving you to let you know and understand that this connection or that this coming of being together or coming together on the same path is no coincidence. Uh, there was almost like a predisposed contract, so it's speaking to me for some of you guys, uh, a previous life connection. Uh, this person played a very important role in your past or previous lifetime. Um, and, and again, it's it's almost, they're telling me for some of you guys, this is a connection where if you feel like there's a lot of synchronicities, there's a lot of things that you guys, it almost feels like you guys are reading each other's mind. It's because this person is your person, Leo. And I do see as time progresses, them opening up and being ready to, hand you over their heart, hand you over um, their true vulnerability. And for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are single, I feel that there is a almost like a burst of new energy that's coming into your love life, even for those of you guys that feel like it's been non-existent for a while, where there is going to be a lot of uh, new people coming into your life. But there is a specific connection that's coming in. This could be a Taurus. This could be an Aries. This could be a Libra um, and water energy as well. Scorpio, Cancer or Pisces type of energy. But they are telling me that this person that's coming in is definitely someone that is going to be playing a very important role in the years to come. Um, and this is going to be a feeling of a soulmate type of connection. Someone that 
you have a, a previous connection to. Um, so very beautiful type of energy here. And I feel that for a lot of you guys, the reason why this person is just coming into your life is because you've cleared out a lot of your karmic cycles. All right, now let's look into your old love for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they feel about you? How does this old love feel about you at this point in time? Eight of Wands, the desire or want to communicate for some of you guys. You could have heard recently from them. Why do they feel this way? Why do they feel this way? Page of Cups, they're still holding on to some type of hope. They still have some type of connection or emotional investment in you. What is their future actions towards Leo? What is their future actions towards Leo? Okay. I don't see any communication. I feel like for some of you guys, there was a recent, there could have been recent communication. We Keep in mind, we are in retrograde. So I feel like it was kind of retrograde type of energy where they were very much in their head. They decided to just out of impulse communicate or send you a text message. Why? Because clearly they're still holding on to some type of hope or some type of still emotional investment in this connection. However, I see them being a bit stuck in the mud, not really wanting to take action. If there was communication, I don't see progress to that communication because they're wanting to hear from you. They're wanting you to be the one to make or take that first step. Um, and again, this is the thing, especially when dealing with people from your past or exes. If they are the ones that are hoping for you to reach out and it was you the one that messed up, then I would understand that. But if the relationship fell apart just because, you know, you guys weren't on the same page, if they really feel like they can't move on or like they're still invested in you, they should be willing to put the effort now that you're not in their life. And if they're still refusing to do that, then they're not worthy of your time, Leo. So my advice here is, again, if you do hear from them, um, don't overdo it. Let them be the one to carry the conversation. Let them be the one to proactively pursue you. And if they're not, it's because they're expecting you to do it. Keep it moving if that's the case, okay? All right, now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer's new love. How do they see Cancer? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they see Cancer? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm going to pick this one. Okay. Two of Wands, they're definitely excited. Um, for some of you guys, this could be a recent connection. For others of you, um, yeah, they're definitely still interested. They are wanting to see how far this connection can go. How do they feel about Cancers at this point in time? How do they feel about Cancer? Wow, okay, the double card. So they're definitely... Okay, so what I'm getting here is for a lot of you guys, there could have been a recent connection, someone that you guys, like the moment you guys seen each other, it was just immediate attraction to to one another. Uh, they are definitely wanting to take you to bed, <laughs> Cancer. That's if they haven't already. Um, very intense, very... This person, I'm going to tell you this, this person constantly is daydreaming about having you, attaining you, and doing you. Future actions towards cancer. Future actions towards cancer. What is their future actions towards cancer? Ace of Wands, yeah. So I see a lot of passion off the bat. What they are telling me here is if you're looking for someone that is going to adore you, that is going to cherish you, that is going to fulfill every fantasy you ever wanted, um, but you're okay with temporary, then definitely embrace this. If you're looking for something long-term, don't kid yourself, Cancer. You know off the bat this person has already shown their colors or their humor, and in their humor, they're kind of like, that's really who they are, if that makes sense. So if they make a lot of like perverted comments or perverted jokes, and it's like all, you know, fun and games, just know that that is who they are. And it's not the type of person that you can make a wife or a husband. So if you're looking for a good time, fully embrace this. I love this energy. But if it's something that you're looking for long term, 
just keep in mind this is not long term this is something that is very cardinal okay if you catch my drift all right don't kid yourself don't kid yourself cancer that's that's what they're telling me so i don't know if if you know and you have a sense of this person and you're like you know maybe they'll change or maybe they told you they're not looking for anything like don't kid yourself because they're not going to change all right, Olaf, let's look into Olaf for Cancers. How do they feel about Cancer at this point in time? How do they feel about Cancer at this point in time? All right, Eight of Cups, what happened? How do they feel? Sorry, not how do they feel. <laughs> Wait, who am I doing? I completely... Cancer. Old love, right? Okay. Why do they feel this way? And what is their future actions? What is their future actions towards cancer? What is their future actions towards cancer? All right. So... <clears throat> They were the ones that perhaps walked away from this connection, Cancer. Um, I, I feel like there is a bit of regret here. There is a bit of feeling, did I make the right decision? I feel them pacing back and forth. It's almost like when you have that incredible desire to reach out, but you're like, no, I can't do it. And you pick up your phone and then you're about to send that text and then you're like, no, like you talk yourself out of doing it. That's where they're at right now mentally. And I feel like the reason for this is because there is some type of resentment and some type of feeling like they weren't appreciated, like you didn't appreciate them or you didn't value them, Cancer. Um, now, in regards to what they feel or why they feel this way, the Knight of Pentacles indicates they really, you know, for some of you guys... This could have been a very long-term relationship. It, it's almost feeling like what I'm hearing is all the years or all the effort I did for nothing. Um, I'm going to be honest. I feel like this person felt very unappreciated. Like you didn't appreciate them or you didn't value them. Um, and again, like I said, they still are emotionally invested in you. However, um, I feel that you may hear from them, but you're definitely not hearing from them, at least not this month. Uh, for some of you guys, I am hearing sometime in the month of October, you may get some type of communication. But um, yeah, I feel like they're holding back and they're like literally trying the best they can to not reach out. So not sure how this played out for you guys. Not sure how, what happened exactly. But what they are telling me is that there is almost like they feel like you left them or you walked out on them or you left them hanging and they feel like you didn't appreciate everything they did for you. Uh, for some of you guys, it could have been that this person financially was supporting you or perhaps financially helped you out in some point uh, in this connection. And they just feel like you just never reciprocated. Um, so, yeah, I don't see them reaching out, at least not anytime soon. OK. All right. Now let's go to Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's look into new love. How do they see Gemini? How do they see Gemini? Oh, I pulled two. Okay, we're going to keep two. Oof, okay. Two queens. All right. How do they feel about Gemini? How do they feel about Gemini? How do they feel about Gemini? All right. Future actions towards Gemini. Future actions towards Gemini. Very interesting here. So how they see you, Gemini, they see you. They see you as a person that could be compassionate, a person that could be understanding, but also at the drop of a dime, you can become very cold and very distant. So there is a bit of duality that's happening here. There is a bit of imbalance. Um, they may be confused about who you are. It's like they're 
what I'm hearing is I'm trying, I'm trying to get like to really get to know you, Gemini, um, but you're not making it easy. So I feel like for some of you guys, it could be that you are scared. You're scared of opening up. You're scared of getting hurt. You're scared of showing your true colors and being taken for granted or being taken advantage of. Um, which would make perfect sense, right? Gemini, <laughs> the twins. Um, but I, I feel like they're really, they're really trying to get to know you. Um, and though they may feel that you are what you possess all of the qualities that they want in a partner. But I feel that ultimately what's going to, because I don't see this progressing into anything long-term Gemini. And the reason for it is because I feel like you're not making it easy for them. And easy doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. I mean, you don't make it easy on them because this is a person that wants consistency. So for some of you guys, I'm getting heavy, heavy earth energy. Um, and for others of you, I'm getting like uh, air energy. So it could be uh, another Gemini like yourself. It could be a Libra or a Aquarius. But I feel like this is a person that values consistency. And I feel like you give them the opposite of consistency. It's like you can be fine right now. And then in 15 minutes, they can say something that will completely trigger you and you become a wholly, like a whole different person. Um, and it's not necessarily to say that it's your fault. I feel like it has a lot to do with your past traumas or past relationship experiences where the moment you feel like you're being too vulnerable and they do something or say something that makes you feel like they are not understanding you or they're judging you, you become very defensive. So I feel like if you're not okay or you're not ready to put yourself out there and to open up to people to get to know them, I think that you're better off walking away from this now before you actually do become very invested, Gemini, because it's going to be very hard because you're going to perceive it as rejection, but it's not rejection. I feel like this person is has more to do with, I don't want, like this person has a tendency of falling or being with people that are very emotionally unavailable. And I feel like even though you may feel like you're ready to start dating or to move on, this duality is definitely giving me the vibes that you're not, you're still not ready or you're not sure if you're ready. Um, so it's almost like they're seeing the red flags in you from past relationships and they're not wanting to hurt anymore. But you're also seeing it as the moment you become vulnerable or the moment you open up and they hurt your feelings in some way, shape or form you immediately protect yourself by being very defensive. So I just feel like both of you guys are on very different pages. I don't see this progressing into anything long-term. I hope that made sense. It was very confusing. All right, now let's look into old love for Gemini. Old love, how do they feel about Gemini? How do they feel about Gemini? Old love, the star card, okay. Why do they feel this way about Gemini? Why do they feel this way about Gemini? Oh, all right. We have two cards here. Okay. Future actions towards Gemini. Future actions towards Gemini. Okay. I am going to be very honest, Gemini. Okay. So in regards to how they feel about you, I feel like they still have feelings for you, but I'm going to be honest. I feel like it has more to do with what you were able or capable of doing for them. So it's almost giving. And the reason I say that is because in how they feel about you is the star card and their future actions is the 10 of pentacles, which would indicate positive outcome. If we didn't have these cards, which is the world and the page of swords. 
So this is indicating to me um, in regards to how they feel about you. They feel like you were in some shape, way or form the star, which would indicate a person that has some type of reputation or a person that knows a lot of people, um, a person that makes things happen. And it's usually because of your connections. That's how they feel about you. The reason why they feel this way, Page of Swords and the World card, because there was an ending, obviously some type of separation or breakup, yet they're still proactively trying to insert their life in your life because of Ten of Pentacles, because I'm missing the stability, because I'm missing the comfortability, because I need the backing, the support. So... I don't necessarily like this energy. Anyone else would read it as positive um, because of the star, because of the Ten of Pentacles. But right in the center, when we're talking about why they feel this way, Page of Swords is stalking type of energy. It is a person that gathers a lot of information based on the ending, right? The world is taking it to the next cycle in your life. When we're talking about relationships, it could speak about progress. It can speak about commitment and all of that based on the other cards. But when we're talking about how they feel about you, there's no water energy here. There's not even pentacles. This is a major arcana, right? And the star is exactly that, you know, when you see something that is very illuminated. So, um, Perhaps they felt like they fell in love with you, but it was more to do with your status. Um, when we're talking about their future actions, Ten of Pentacles, if you were married or if you have kids, this could be a person that tries to um, manipulate certain situations or circumstances because using the kids as an excuse because they feel that they need your backing, your support, your finances. So... If this is resonating with you, the best thing that could have happened to you was this ending. Keep it pushing, Gemini. Keep it pushing. Um, if you were dealing with a person that perhaps you did a lot for, not necessarily monetarily wise, money wise, financially, but it was more like you gave them the support that perhaps they never experienced, the stability they never had, and you helped them. And in that helping, their confidence kind of boosted even to the point of maybe belittling you. Um, this person needs a humble, rude awakening. So my advice is, like I said, keep it pushing. Don't waste your time. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Taurus. Let's look into their new love. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they see you? New love. How do they see you? Nine of Swords. Whew. How do they feel about Taurus? How do they feel about Taurus at this point? You're really stressing them the fuck out. I'm not going to lie. Future actions. Future actions for Taurus. Oh, okay. I'm going to put them back. Future actions from the new love. Future actions towards Taurus. All right. So... I feel like you're really stressing them out. I feel like this person, first of all, uh, you could be dating someone that could be very quirky, very like quirky, dorky, uh, a person that is very sensitive, not to be misinterpreted or confused with like, like needy or anything like that. This is just the person that is genuinely sensitive to energies and I feel like they're very much in their head about you because you make it really difficult um difficult to it's like I see them stressing about like making a date or taking you out they stress about the fact that you don't respond to them you don't respond you don't text you don't call back and if you do it's probably a day went by um you're just definitely not I don't feel you very much in it Taurus, I'm gonna be honest. For some of you guys, you're using this person as a scapegoat. You're trying to entertain yourself because you're trying to move on from something or you're trying to run away from something. Um, and I feel like it's very unfair. Their future actions towards you is, you know, they're gonna put they're gonna tell you exactly what it is that they want. 
I feel like if they haven't done that up until now, they will hit a breaking point where they're going to be like, you know what, I offer you, you know, to take it to the next level, let's become official. If this is not what you want, like you need to let me know. This is a person that definitely is not wanting to waste time. They're definitely hoping and being hopeful about that you may want them and that maybe I it's like I constantly hear them like making excuses for your behavior. So I'm not sure what's going on there, Taurus, but I'm gonna be honest with you. If you're using this person as a scapegoat, meaning you're trying to keep yourself busy because something's not working out in the background, um, and you're like, okay, let me see what's out there. Keep in mind that everything we do comes back to us. And the reason I say that is because nine of swords with the hanged man is a lot of anxiousness, a lot of stress, a lot of worry. The hanged man is sacrificing, right? So the need or desire to sacrifice or the way they relate to relationships is that they have to sacrifice something um, in order to attain something. So this could be a person that has a record of like going after people that are extremely toxic. I know that you're above that Taurus. So again, um, just keep in mind because oftentimes I want to say like 60% of the time when I see these type of cards uh, with the client reading, um, what goes around comes around and that will show up or that's something that the, the client will experience down the line. So it's like the moment you start being good to this person, the, the switch flips or the flip switch, no, the switch flips, where you're the one that's chasing them and they are the ones that are treating you the way you're treating them. So just word of advice, okay? There's no need to play games, you guys. If you see that the person you're dealing with is wanting something serious and you're not looking for that, keep it pushing. There is tons, tons of people out there that are not looking for anything serious. Trust me, you can find them like anywhere. Um, just be honest about what it is that you want. I, don't, I never understood people's obsession with like being deceptive. I just don't get that. But anyways, to each their own, right? <laughs> Okay, now let's go to Taurus's old love or old flame. How do they feel about Taurus? How do they feel about Taurus? Okay. Why do they feel this way? Why do they feel this way about Taurus? I'm raising Venus. All right, future actions. Future actions. Future actions for Taurus. See, this is the fuckery I was talking about. Okay. So we did the new love, right? And I feel like you're stringing someone along. Hey, if you've never done it, we all need to experience it at some point, right? No judgment here. Um, just keep in mind that what we do comes back to us. Good or bad, don't matter. Okay, moving on. <laughs> all right, so when we're talking about old love, how they feel about you is they're holding on to hope or they're wanting to work it out. They're wanting to fix it. Why do they feel this way? Because they've realized that you're the person that they want to commit to or you're the person that they want to be with. Now, what is their future actions communication? So I feel eight of wands. I feel like you're already communicating with someone from your past. So for some of you guys, it could be that you've been stuck on this relationship or this emotional roller coaster of a relationship where you guys just are doing great. Then it falls apart. Then you guys get back together, et cetera, et cetera. And the list goes on, right? Um, or the story goes on and we go back to the same thing, right? Of I'm tired of this. I've outgrown this. I want to deal with this shit. So then you start dating, but then this person comes back around and then you drop the person you're dealing with because of this person. So what I'm seeing here is I do, I definitely do seek reconciliation or the opportunity to reconcile the opportunity to rekindle this connection. I feel like the person from the past may have grown, may have matured, or came to the realization that if they lose you, they're definitely going to lose you and there's no turning back. So I feel like they're wanting to regain your trust or rebuild some type of connection here. Now, for others of you, this could indicate that the desire to want to fix it came from the 
finding out or the realizing that perhaps the person that you were dealing with could have been in a committed relationship and it could have started as something casual or like something physical. Um, but then you guys got emotionally invested with each other. So if that is your case and you are dealing with a person that is married or that is committed or you're the married person and committed person, what they're telling you here is, again, Eight of Wands is primarily, you know, animalistic, primal type of connection, which is purely physical, um, which is talking about, you know, passion. And it's kind of like the saying, what starts wrong ends wrong. So do that with what you will. All right. And finally, we are going to look at Aries, new love. New love for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they see Aries? How do they see Aries? How do they see them? How do they see Aries? Four of Swords. How do they feel about Aries? How do they feel about Aries? And future actions. Future actions towards Aries. Future actions towards Aries. All right, so... They see you as very disconnected, Aries. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you could have been or you can be going through a situation where you're trying to find yourself or you're trying to heal from something. For some of you guys, it could be healing from a past relationship. For others of you, trying to overcome some type of addiction, some type of... Um, it could be a mental or physical addiction, so... Um, what they're showing me here is they see you as disconnected. They feel like you're not giving them the time or the effort because you have a lot of options. Um, but again, with the hermit card here, it's almost like they're very much in their head about what's going on in your life because it's really difficult for them to understand, or perhaps you don't communicate, um, so it's like their mind is going rampant, right? It's going wild thinking of all the crazy scenarios. But I feel in reality that for a lot of you, Aries, you are going through some type of healing. You are going through some type of understanding or realization of habits or, like I said, some type of addiction and the understanding of that. So I feel like you're trying to find yourself or you're going through this journey of finding yourself while this person is very much in their head about what's going on with this connection. Um, now, for others of you, you've been single for a very long time. Perhaps for some of you guys, uh, sex was some type of addiction. For others of you, it could just been like alcohol, drugs, something like that. I feel like you're coming from that and you're healing from that. And perhaps that's the reason why you've been single or perhaps that's the reason why your previous relationships didn't work out. And at this point, I see you guys like putting the effort to actually heal from that and to find your truth. It's almost like you're trying to reconnect with yourself, figure out what it is that you want, figure out um, if being in a relationship is something you're ready for or it's something you're wanting. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be that, you know, monogamous relationships just hasn't worked out in the past. And now you're realizing as you're getting older, this is something that you're looking forward to. So again, there's almost a jump in this growth that's happening with you guys. Um, and I feel like this is a very, it's a very beautiful path because it is speaking about growth. It is speaking about self-actualization and realizing who you were in the past is no longer who you are and who you are now may have wants and needs that perhaps in the past you didn't have. So again, a lot of growth that's happening here. All right, now let's look into the old love for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they feel about Aries? How do they feel about Aries, old love? All right, why do they feel this way? Why do they feel this way? Why do they feel this way? Okay, and future actions towards Aries. Future actions towards Aries. 
All right, so I do see communication opening up for some of you guys, um, perhaps not the communication you're expecting. Now, in regards to how they feel about you, Three of Swords does indicate to me, again, betrayal, going through some type of hurt, some type of cheating could have been involved. Um, and they are definitely in their feelings about it. Now, for some of you guys, because I do have the Emperor card here, I feel like this person from your past could have been a situation where perhaps you were the one that stepped out of the relationship. Um, and the moment you stepped out of the relationship, it completely changed the way they viewed you. Um, perhaps you guys continued this connection or this relationship until it got to the point that it was them who stepped out. So if you were dealing with a situation where you know for a fact areas that you cheated or that you stepped out of the relationship, then all of a sudden you guys went back with each other, try to fix it. And all of a sudden you started to notice this person change rapidly um, or act very differently or uh, even perhaps for some of you guys, you found out that this person was cheating on you or stepping out of the relationship it almost feels to me like a vengeful type of betrayal, like they did it on purpose to hurt you. Um, and from this, um, I feel like the reason why they feel this way was because it was a pride type of thing. It was an ego type of thing. It could have been that they felt like betrayed. Obviously, you know, when cheating is involved, it's a betrayal. It's a, um, a letdown. It is a all the words that would describe sorrow and pain. Um, but with the Emperor card here, I feel like this person, um, in regards to why they feel this way, it's like they had to prove a point. They had to dig the same, you know, the same wound that you made. It, it was about competition is what I'm seeing here. And I feel like this person at some point could have, really relished in how much you cared for them or how much you love them um, where it just became something normal and it doesn't necessarily have to be cheating for some of you guys it could have just been that you were in a very toxic very unhealthy relationship and it was like the more you tried to prove yourself the more you went above and beyond for this person the more this person became selfish um, and the more they continuously kept hurting you, I do see that communication does open up for some of you guys. You may be dealing with this person. It could be your baby mama. It could be your baby father. Um, but what I'm sensing here is more to do with like communicating or reaching out to you or, um, still being in contact with you because, there is almost like a narcissistic type of energy that I'm sensing here. The emperor, I'm getting it like in reverse position, which would indicate uh, narcissistic tendencies. The It's about the power. It's about, you know, let me reach out to Aries. Even though I've hurt them, even though I've let them down, let me reach out. And then you respond and it's like, oh, look, I can still get them. I can still have them respond to me. I can still walk through that door type of thing. So if you are dealing with this type of energy, Aries, it's time to close the door on that and stop allowing people to come in and out of your life when they choose to. There is a need for major stability, but the stability has to come from you. So when I say stability that comes from you, it's indicating knowing your worth, standing in your truth, standing in your power, not allowing others to take advantage of your kind heart or to take advantage of the type of nature that you are when it comes to loyalty. Yes, even people that are loyal sometimes mess up. And then that's just a fact. And that's just how life works. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're a horrible person. And that for that, you have to continuously keep dealing with a person that keeps perpetually hurting you and breaking you down. So it's time to close the door on that, Aries. All right, my lovelies, I hope that this gives you guys insight um, into what is unfolding for this month of September in regards to love and romance. I will see you guys soon. Till then, take care. Bye.